It's a good thing I have to uh, make some arrangements because that's pretty powerful stuff. Good morning. Good morning. And once again, and not because I'm a member, but once again, the choir has done themselves proud. Amen. 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 Yes. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy being a part of, of this little team back here that's growing. It's, it's really great. And, and I want to thank Reverend Jim for um, actually making the choir fun mm -hmm. and helping us develop confidence and the skills to make a, a very pleasing, joyful noise. Into Amen. 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 So, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ has risen again. He is risen indeed. You know, we have the luxury of knowing that Christ defeats death today. And so we awaken this morning with jubilations and thanksgiving. We have celebrated Easter and the risen Christ for over 2,000 years, and this story and the birth story are known around the world regardless of really religious affiliation. So I believe that we have the remembrance down fairly well, don't you? Mm -hmm. So again, I say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ has risen again. He has, he has risen, risen indeed. Will you pray with me? Creator God, God of life, rest upon your servant and all of those who yearn for your presence. Spirit, blow over us as we seek your message for us this Easter morning. Arise in us a new spirit, a spirit for your ways, Lord, a spirit that knows your heart for justice and peace, a heart that is willing to bring hope and new life into our lives and the lives of others. I thank you, God, for the words that you have placed upon my heart, and I pray that they bring honor and blessings to you, O God. Open the hearts and the minds of all who are here to hear the word that you have for us today. I pray this in your many names. Amen. 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 You know, the passage today is a familiar Easter story. There are four, just like there are in the birth stories, four different recordings of the empty tomb. And this, of course, is John, which is the fourth, not necessarily written in that order. But it's only in John's recording that human eyes see Jesus at the tomb. And the, and the day we call Resurrection Sunday. And the only person to witness the resurrected Jesus at the tomb was a woman. <laughs> Mary Magdalene. This is a great, has a great significance for me. Um, in Mary seeing Jesus on this day. And, and first of all, it's you know obvious that Mary is a woman, and women, as you recall, were in, in essence non-persons in the context of John's Gospel. Much has not changed for women in some third world societies, which actually even exist within the United States. Second, her witness stood alone and needed no male witness to verify her report. I like that. The feminist in me jumps for joy every time I read this story, and I find it interesting that the writer of John did not record Jesus appearing to Jesus and the beloved disciple or any other male as they ran to verify the tomb was empty. However, he or she did not record it that way, and I would say this little nugget represents a resurrection of women's value in the world. Like Jesus, Mary emerged from the darkness her darkness was one of despair and grief over losing her beloved teacher and friend. She arrived at the tomb in darkness before the sun was even a glimmer on the horizon. She was bringing perfume and oils to anoint her beloved friend. And she may have been thinking as she walked in the darkness that this was the least she could do for Jesus. In her love and her remembrance, she wanted to ensure that her loving Jewish Rabboni received a proper burial blessing and dressing. It is in the darkness that she discovered the stone was rolled away and her heart broke and the darkness became almost smothering as she sobbed at the thought of Jesus being stolen and treated so much as garbage. Where is he? 
What have you done with him? Please tell me so I can provide a proper burial. Mm -hmm. Please tell me, she asked the two angels that were waiting to tell her the good news of Jesus' resurrection. In her darkness, Mary sobs and pleads with the man whom she takes to be the gardener. And he asks her, who are you looking for? Her ears were unable to hear any familiarity in the voice of the one standing just a few feet away. In her darkness, she could not see clearly, and her tears made it almost impossible to discern the figure she was pleading with. Can you hear me? Please, please, tell me, she pleads. <coughs> then there was silence, and out of the darkness came a voice. It was from the one she took as a gardener. Jesus said, Mary! And the darkness lifted, and she could breathe again, and her eyes were clear. Her heart was filled with joy unspeakable. Rabboni, she said. And Mary realized her beloved teacher was alive and risen and was overjoyed at his return from the dead. Can you feel her elation? Can you feel the light that is Jesus? Yet this... Just moments earlier, she was standing inches, just inches away from Jesus, and she did not recognize him. How could that be? Could it be because she came looking for a dead man? Mary was not looking for Jesus of life because Mary's dark world, he was dead and gone. It's no fault of Mary's that she was looking for a battered, crucified corpse. That's what she had witnessed just a day and a half earlier. And that was her focus, to provide a fitting and final resting place for Jesus. Let me say it again. Mary was standing toe to toe with her beloved teacher and her friend, and she did not see him for the darkness in her heart and world. Could the darkness that engulfed Mary be the problem we face this Easter? We live in a world that is full of turmoil, that is heavy with darkness. Could it be that we are so used to the day-to-day -day grind that we have come to see only the darkness in the world that we live in? Have our expectations become so small that we don't expect any change at all? If we saw Jesus standing in the garden, we probably would think that he was a gardener too. We, like Mary, have been going about our task in this world that we don't even know, and we don't even know that we're going in circles. Around and around we go, paddling, pedaling, walking in darkness. Would we know the way out of the darkness even if it was standing right in front of us? Mary really didn't. You know, that's a good question for Easter. Do we know our way out of the darkness or, or way? Maybe. Maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Maybe there's a different way to look at it. Maybe the promise of the gospel is not that we see Jesus, but that Jesus sees us. Mm. Jesus saw Mary. Mary couldn't see Jesus. Jesus recognized Mary. Jesus called Mary's name. My sheep will know my name. My sheep will know my voice when I get their attention. <laughs> so it does. It makes all the difference. So in closing, could the hope of Easter is not to see Jesus, but to know that Jesus sees us in all our humanness, with all our warts and our scars and our doubts. And as we stand at the tomb looking for a corpse, will we hear our name being called 
by the man we mistook as the gardener. It's my hope that we too will know the joy of Jesus calling us to be in relationship as we go about God's business of bringing light into the darkness of this world. Thanks be to God. Amen.